In this video, we will take a look at the Gemcracker cloud control and hybrid appliances and the functionalities they can deliver for enterprises looking to manage and control their cloud costs. These appliances come with pre-built adapters. In the cloud control appliance, it comes with Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and IBM Bluemix. For the hybrid appliance, in addition to what you get in the cloud control appliance, you also get VMware vCenter, vCloud Director, and OpenStack. With the Jamcracker Cloud Control and Hybrid Appliances, you'll be able to get complete enterprise cloud control and management. The functionality that we'll be covering in this demonstration includes smart catalogs, application ordering approval workflows, application workload provisioning and management, budgeting functionality, and cloud cost management, delivered as dashboards giving you visibility into your cloud costs and policies giving you control over those costs. The first thing we'll take a look at is the smart catalog functionality. What the catalog allows you to do are define different sets of items to appear in the catalog based on the department. You can also change those catalog items for each department. So as you can see here, we have currently have three different catalog items available for this user in the department that I'm in. If I were to go and change that by going to Manage Catalog, and then go and modify the default catalog, and add a few different items. This generic VM for VMware, one for Bluemix, Save and Finish. We now see that there should be five applications available. If I were to log out and log back in, then when I go to the catalog page, you'll see now five different items. So as you can see, you can filter the number of catalog items for each department, allowing you to give specific services and workloads to different groups of users, say a certain set for salespeople, certain set for engineers. Now the platform comes by default with these items you see here and you can modify them so that the information shown to you is exactly what you'd like to see for your organization. So I'll give you an example of how to do that. If I go here to the admin interface, which is a separate login, I go to administration and service management and I'll go ahead and search for the AWS item. I can then go and edit that item so for example, I can edit the service summary description and I'll hit the HTML editor. This just gives you an idea of the different things you can change. So you can add images and flash media, etc. So you can completely customize how it appears in the catalog. And you can also pick which portals to make this application available in. The platform comes default with four different portals. You can use this for four different groups, and you can choose to show it to all of them or only some. Let's go ahead and launch this application. So I'm back here in the end user interface. Let me go ahead and click launch for this item. So here in the application stack palette, we see the resources on the left hand side, and there could be one or more. In this case, there's only one, and the information that would be related to that stack on the right hand side. I'll go ahead and fill in some of the information. A description if I want, something quick. And I can go ahead and then specify a budget code. If you enable budgeting and you set up some budgets, you can make sure that users are picking budgets where the cost of the app stack is to be applied when they're ordering the app stack to be launched. Then also specify information about the resource itself in the cloud provider. So again, we can give this a name. We can select which vendors. In this case, only AWS has been selected, but that's because this application stack was designed only for AWS. This could very easily have been assigned and designed for multiple vendors. And then pick which region. Again, these settings are all controlled and limited by what the application stack designer want you to see. You could have multiple selections of each of these or just one depending upon what the designer wants to do. 
I'll fill out some more of this information, select a small instance here. Micro instance. And then select the network that is available to me in AWS. We can give the NIC a unique name. And then select which subnet available within that network that we want to use. We also have the ability to set IP addressing and security groups or firewall rules. So in this case, we see that SSH and the HTTP and security HTTP protocols are all enabled to the world. I could edit those if I wish. Now, as I was selecting those, those pieces of information, we also saw the estimated cost up here change. That is defined by the options that we're selecting here. If I were to select a larger instance, for example, you'd see that price change. I'll go ahead and launch this. And here, the very first time I launch it, it's going to present me with a, these agreements, sort of an SLA for the application. I'll go ahead and agree to all. And then we see that it tells us that the stack creation is initialized. Now what's really happened here, I've set this up to make sure that every item goes through an approval workflow. And here we can see I have an approval pending for this latest request. I go ahead and view this. Now the admin would get an email showing that a new item would be in here and they could come and view the details of the item, look at the resources, etc., and then approve it or not. I'll go ahead and approve it, click confirm. After doing that, if we go back and look at the application stacks, we can see here that the application stack is initializing, and we can see it running through its steps, creating this application stack. And in just a minute, this will come up, and I'll take a look at how we can manage the application stack from an operational standpoint. Now that this application stack is in its running state after a minute or so, I can then take a look at it and either view the details of the stack or terminate it as a whole. This is especially useful if multiple instances or multiple resources are part of the application stack. In this case, we will view the details. And we see the application stack appearing a lot like what we saw when we were launching it, except now we can see the actual information about the items with each of the resources. So I'll view the details of the instance itself. And here in the instance details screen, we can see things like its IP address, when it was launched, if we want to terminate at a certain time. We have basic lifecycle management functionality. And we'll see other information about where it's been launched and what size it is. Now, if I want to access this machine, and if I like to use PuTTY, for instance, I could download this private key and then run through the process of you know, converting a private key into a PuTTY format and then use PuTTY. You can also just click the launch SSH button here and it will launch an SSH window right here in the browser. It's a nice quick way to get in without having to do any key manipulations. We give you the choice either way of launching through the web interface here or you can download the key and use your own program. And for Windows machine, you could get the remote desktop in the browser instead of having to open up that program separately. You also notice here in the instant details, I have the ability to sign into the vendor console. So if I want to, for instance, single sign into Amazon Web Services, you see the platform here is single signing me into the console for the account that's associated with my user. Now, one of the great things about the platform is that we will provide you with the cost for all of the services you consume in services like Amazon or Azure. So whether you're consuming some Lambda resources or CloudTrail or, or whatever, um, even though you don't manage those through the platform itself, if you do consume those in the console natively, either by SSO or if you're logged in using your regular credentials, anything associated with the account will be brought into the platform and made available to you um, in your reports. So you can get a good hit on all of your costs, not just those where you've launched from within the Jamcracker platform. We also have the ability to manage volumes. You could add additional disk volumes, either attach an existing one. Maybe you have some existing volumes that were set up to perhaps have some utilities or some test data. You can also create and attach a new volume. So you can give it a name, 
pick a type, and then pick a size. So that's one way to go and attach additional volumes in and manage those volumes separately. We can also go and modify the network interface or add additional interfaces. As you can see, I just have this one interface, but I can go and edit this and make some changes. Maybe assign um, a public IP address if I had, had purchased any. Right now, it's just going to pick a default, but if I were to go and, and pick this one here, for instance, this is an elastic IP that would then be persistent with this instance regardless of how many times it's been rebooted. You can also add additional network interfaces maybe if you need to create a separate network for control and management. Last but not least is tagging. I could have done this while I was launching the application stack but we could also do it afterwards. I could maybe associate this with a project. And I could add multiple tags as well. These tags will allow me to both separate my costs and, and view my costs in ways that are relevant for my business. They also give me the ability to operate certain policies based on tags. Now I had showed you a little bit about budgeting when I was ordering this application stack. But here's where you go and manage the budget. So in this screen is where we can define the budgets as well as view a showback report. So to define budgets, the quickest way is to just download the sample template, open it up, and modify the template with your information for your given budgets. As you can see, you have a period, which is on a monthly basis. What is the code, the budget description, how much is allocated to the budget, and the threshold percentage. As part of the budgeting functionality, you're able to send alerts when you either cross this threshold or cross the actual budget amount. Those alerts would be sent to the administrator and would also be alerted to the user when they're actually doing the provisioning or ordering. After saving that file I could then go and upload it and those budgets would be updated automatically. Last but not least is the ability to view the showback report. We could see here for each of the budgets that I had in the system how much has been allocated and how much has actually been consumed. So managing budgets is just one way for you to get a handle on your costs. Through the dashboard, you can provide very rich information for all of your infrastructure as a service costs. In a separate video on Jamcracker Cloud Analytics, I go into detail on these six different dashboards. We can get a real-time dashboard with cloud resources. We can get an executive dashboard, drill down a little further with the cost analytics dashboard. View the Tag Analytics dashboard, which really allows you to customize your views and data for your given business. We also have a dedicated Microsoft Enterprise Agreement dashboard. So that gives you visibility into your costs, but we also give you a way to control your costs via policies. Policies here give you the ability to control your costs based on various factors. For instance, we can get alerts at the account level, or for a specific product. And you see here we have some seed policies in the system out of the box allowing you to do that. We also have the ability to either shut down and start up machines over the weekends. For example, I come in here and take a look at this one. This policy is defined to shut down virtual machines over the weekend. Policy applies to instances that are filtered by keys and values. I could go ahead and define something like I did earlier, project alpha. And this will then only apply to instances with the tag of project alpha. You can add additional tags if you want to refine your filters further. This would have set up to be a calendar policy to occur on a weekly basis at 11 p.m. on a Friday. And the action here is to stop the server. There are different actions available for instances as well. You can resize machines, 
send notifications, and create images. So that's an example of one policy, but you can always add brand new ones if needed. I'll click on this add icon here. As you can see, it's very simple to create a new policy. I can give it a name, give it some sort of a description, and then set the policy up for either instances, volumes, or based on usage. For example, for volumes, Again, filtering by tags and using a calendar, maybe also on a, maybe on a daily basis at a certain time. I can either delete unused volumes, set al send alerts, send an email notification of an event, or actually create a snapshot. Creating a snapshot could be particularly useful for a backup and restore policy making sure that you always have the latest data available to you. Another interesting policy would be for instances, using keys to filter on the specific items. I can also use a create server action, and this will allow us to send an alert when a number of licenses for a particular application might be exceeded. So I can set the seat policy count to maybe 10. If I've purchased 10 licenses of a certain application that I want to select here with the, with the filter keys, giving you another way to help manage your infrastructure service and some licensing for any applications you might have on those. That wraps up our video for the Jamcracker Cloud Control and Hybrid Appliances demonstration, where we took a look at smart catalogs, application ordering workflow, workload provisioning and management, budgeting, and cloud cost management via dashboards and policies. Thank you for taking the time to review our video. If you need more information, please contact us at information at or visit our website at www.jamcracker.com.